getting the tent set up. Yeah, it's three o'clock. How do you feel about that tent that we've never put up? Uh, we got a lot of work to do, but we'll figure it out. Okay. We're gonna find the elk, kill the elk. Super easy, it's guaranteed. It's not guaranteed, but we're gonna try. I don't know, how excited? Tell me how excited you are. I'm fucking stoked, man. <laughs> me too, this is gonna be fun. We got the tent set up without issue and we headed out for the first evening hunt. for day one was just to find some elk. We ended up posting up on a glassing knob for most of the evening where we could cover a lot of country. Unfortunately, we didn't see any elk and we didn't see any sign of elk, so the next day we moved on to a new area. Joe, I like climbing up these breaks. We started way down there. Pretty steep. Pretty steep. No snakes yet. No good. When we originally spotted these two bulls, they were in a small clearing on a hillside. As Joe and I began our stalking on the bulls, they must have got up and re-bedded. When we got to that small clearing, we couldn't find them. We glassed around for a while, but we couldn't locate them, so we decided to move up further. And as we crossed that opening, the bulls must have spotted us because they got up and busted. And that was the end of that stalk. After busting those bulls out of the area, we figured we'd check out a new part of the unit and get some scouting done. To our surprise, the first thing we located was three bighorn sheep. We glassed this area for the whole evening and Joe ripped his first bugle in Montana, but we didn't spot any bulls. That was actually pretty good. Seriously, pretty good. Well, we're about to eat some dinner. We just got back from, uh, what was that side of the road? Or that side of the, where we were hunting? The oh. brakes? Yeah, top secret. Oh, yeah, yeah, just kidding, top secret. <laughs> <laughs> so we saw- We were in Montana. Yeah, we're in Montana. Uh, we saw three bighorn sheep, uh -huh. my first ever bighorn sheep. Super cool. Yeah, they're about 200 yards away at first. So, uh, And then we saw another bighorn sheep uh, on our way up. So pretty awesome stuff. No elk though. No elk. We no did, elk this evening. We did hear, <clears throat> hear one bugling pretty close to camp though. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to try to bugle that one in the morning. And then if not, we were on two bulls this morning, so we're gonna head back to that spot if the, the camp bull doesn't bugle and, and yeah. try that one. So, yeah, so what do we got? We got chicken fajitas, courtesy of Shauna, on the menu. Yeah, thanks, Shauna. Thanks, Shauna. And then uh, doing some, some tailgate cooking here. Works out pretty good, though. Yeah. Yeah. The next morning, we headed back to the same area where we had spotted the two bulls the morning before. To our surprise, the smaller of the two bulls was bedded in almost exactly the same spot as the day before. This time, Joe and I decided that I'd stay up on top of the ridge and glass in case the bull re-bedded like he did the day before. Good bull, 
Joe began to make stock on this bull, and as he did, this bull, just like the bulls the day before, got up and rebedded. Unlike the bulls the day before that went downhill, this one actually went uphill and got into a thicker area that I knew Joe wouldn't be able to see once he got to that opening. When this bull got up to rebed, he fed around for a little bit, and then he moved uphill, got behind this little knob where I lost sight of him. Shame. Have to get the full story. That bull busted out of here. He's way down the hillside, so I'll have to get the full story when he gets back to the top. So you're back from the walk of shame. <laughs> Give me the recap. So, uh, well, put my first stock on a bull elk. Uh, I went down the draw, tried to be as quiet as I could, and uh, I was doing good. And then there was like two shelves there, and I underestimated how low I needed to get, so I dropped to the first shelf. And I crept around and the closest I get was 120 yards, 115 yards. You saw him though? Oh yeah. I Did was, he see you right away? No. No. So I was like right in his kitchen. So I dropped my pack, freaking got my binos out, looked at him. I was like, oh yeah, definitely a shooter for this guy, right? Yeah, right. And then- Looks huge in person, don't they? Yeah. So then uh, he got up and I was like, oh, either went to me or I spooked him. So I blew a couple cow calls, tried to get him to stop, and he just took over. Oh, I must have smelled you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but if he, he was, didn't see you. Man, you forget, or you, you don't know how big they are until they stand up, because he was bedded down. Yeah. And he stood up, and I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It's a horse with antlers. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Dude. That's but, awesome. Uh, Pretty solid bull. Wasn't a giant, but a solid one. Yeah. It looked yeah. good on my wall, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, you, you made a real good stock, too. He, uh, when you were like halfway down this draw, yeah. he, he got up and rebedded. He started going up there. You didn't spook him or anything. He just got up and walked uphill. Oh really? Yeah, so he wasn't where where, he where was. we saw him. No. That makes sense. Yeah, because yeah, I had I had landmarked two other bedding areas, and he wasn't there. And I was like, oh man. But I, I looked up at you, and you're like, keep going, basically. You yeah. know? And I was like, oh, what the hell happened? Yeah, I got over, and then I peeked over a rock, and there he was. You gotta be stealthy, man. Yeah, when, when you get in tight like that, you gotta just take your time, and you gotta look everything, look for antler tips, look for any movement. Yeah. Because they're hardly moving, so you gotta really take your time. Yeah, as he was laying in that bed, he was like scanning the whole time yep. too pretty wild yeah like just his head but yeah and nice thing he, with elk like i said you can see the antler tips usually so as you're creeping up you just gotta really look for antlers yeah but you got close dude real yeah. close that's yeah, exciting that? right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Awesome. awesome awesome well damn good morning I'm... well stuck the mule deer last night day five day five yeah uh, while we we're putting a stock on them we got to an area of clearing where there was no cover, so we threw the decoys on the bow. And then as we're stalking them, we look to the right, about 100 yards away, 120. Uh, there's a bull elk moving in. We could smell them before we saw them. And then, uh, so we changed course and started putting the stock on the bull elk. We got uh, within about 105 yards of them. And then we saw a second elk that was even bigger, bull elk. Really nice one. Real nice one. Uh, Jeremy did the cow call, got his attention. He started moving his way towards us, but uh, he kept his distance and then uh, ran into the dark. Got too dark to shoot. And then uh, this morning, got up, hiked up uh, Murder Mountain 2.0, <laughs> and uh, we didn't see anything. It was a perfect morning too. Super cold, nice and brisk. Uh, yeah, so no elk this morning. Give them tonight. We'll get them tonight. All right. After a hard day of elk hunting. There's nothing I love more than sewing my ripped pants that I didn't have time to sew in town. So we we hiked in like three miles today, and then set up camp, hiked out another probably mile, mile and a half. Had a pretty good encounter with a bull, and now we're back at camp freezing, and I'm gonna sew my pants. So here we go. <laughs> Did you get the thread through the needle? No, I'm working on it. Nice. <laughs> uh, what? 
So why don't you give me an interview right now? Oh. Since we're trapped in a tent, it's raining for the second day in a row, and the hunting sucks. Might as well, might as well tell me all about it. All right, man. Let's f do this. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Worst guide ever. No, oh, worst guide ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I was doing pretty good until I was trapped in a tent for 14 f hours <laughs> in the rain. You know. I'm pretty mentally tough, but uh, yeah, that did me in, bro. Yep. Yep. Then we went out tonight, hiked about six mile death march. All that was uphill somehow. Yeah, I don't <laughs> understand how it was uphill there. And uphill back. What the? <laughs> uh, we're having a great time though. Yeah. Yep, just getting rained on and endless suffering. Yep. No elk. Saw two hunters today, that's good. Yeah. They yeah. head out. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. Oh, my oh. Well, we're going to relocate tomorrow. Get yep. some showers because we haven't showered in about six months. Yeah. And get back after them. That's all you can do. Just keep grinding. Keep grinding. All right, buddy. All right. Well, day seven? I think so. Day seven of the hunt. Woke up this morning, made some coffee, took a leak. Uh, Jeremy went around the bend to see if he could see any elk, and while he was doing that, uh, he spotted a bull, and I looked down here to the river, and I saw a bull as well. So Jeremy came back, that one was headed over the ridge, so we started to stalk this one, and man, it's hard to keep up with an elk. <laughs> so he went up this draw here, we tried to cut him off on where we thought he was going to bed, and uh, he just disappeared and vanished ninjas yeah um, so now we're packed up we're gonna leave the spot go home get a shower good dinner and uh regroup figure out the plan for the next week of elk hunt in 2022 got about a three mile death march to the truck oh yeah yeah forgot to mention that this pack here you know yeah carry this heavy bastard about three miles <laughs> that away so, all right yeah, that should be fun here we go here we go we ended up taking an afternoon off for a steak and a shower and to boost morale we got back hunting, but this time we went out for deer. It didn't take long to get into the action. As we were walking out to the place we planned to hunt, we spotted a nice 3 by 4 mule deer and the stock was on. At this point, the deer was only about 70 yards away, so Joe was going to crawl in and try to get a shot. At this point, Joe's crawled into range. He's new to hunting with the decoy, so I'm trying to motion him to draw and then stand up behind the decoy for a shot. The buck was in a field of brush and we didn't want to risk spooking him so we didn't get a lot of footage of him but here you can see the rack pretty well. Well, somehow we managed to screw up getting footage of the shot, but Joe got drawn back, took a 30 yard shot, hit the deer, and then here in this footage you can see the deer is limping away. We tracked the deer about 400 yards that afternoon and then we ended up bumping him. We decided to leave him overnight and come back in the morning. We were able to pick up the track the next morning about 900 yards away, and then we found this bed. Based on the blood trail and the way the deer limped off in the footage, we think Joe hit the deer low in the front leg and it didn't get into the chest cavity. 
definitely a tough break, but anyone that's bow hunted long enough knows that these things happen. It's unfortunate, but it's just part of the game. One of my favorite things about living in Montana is all the opportunity at different species. After Joe's deer hunt, we were heading to a new area and we saw some antelope off the side of the road. I actually had an archery antelope tag this year, so we pulled over for an impromptu antelope stock. If you've never done any spot and stock archery antelope hunting, this is usually what it looks like. There's no cover and you use a little bit of train that's available, crawl around, try to stay out of sight and inevitably bust the antelope. It's a little hard to make out in the video, but on that distant hillside, there's a group of antelope that I just spooked out of the area on an unsuccessful stock. Well, after 10 days of pretty hard hunting, that brought an end to our trip. We weren't able to fill any of our tags, unfortunately, but we had a great time, learned a lot about our areas, and made a lot of great memories. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you want to be notified for new videos. Until then.